the key that is most critical and crucial for our personal life, for the security of nations, and for such a time as this. And that key is the power of the blood of Jesus. We must all at this time know that the power of the blood of Jesus has provided everything you need to live a life of victory, including redemption, fellowship, healing, protection, and authority over the devil. Today we are going to do an x-ray of what the blood has done, and we are also going to re release it into our heavenlies and into our life, trusting God that this greatest immunity we speak up for us and our nation in Jesus' name. And so if the whole world don't know, we as children of God at this time and hour, we are supposed to know the power in the blood of Jesus. Hebrew chapter 9 verse 7. Hebrew chapter 9 verse 7. But into the second part of the high priest went in on once a year, not without blood which he offered for himself and for the people's sins committed in ignorance. So of all the glorious things that the blood means, this is one of the most gracious. His blood is the sign and the measure, yes, the impact of his love. Why? Because you can never collect blood until something has died. Before you can collect blood from a being, you have reduced the life of the being. And I believe that for him to have freely given up his blood and then shedded it for us is a true symbol of the love of Jesus for every single one of us. And so in appropriation of the blood, we are not going to take the blood for granted. Let us remember the first thing to bear in our mind is that the redemption of mankind came through the blood of Jesus. The redemption of mankind came through the blood. We have redemption through the blood. Romans chapter 5 from verse 12. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all have what? Sinned. Every man have sinned. But I could just want to take a little time to explain why the covering, the Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of what? Sin. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of what? Sin. All mankind have sinned, but without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Put in another way, the only thing that takes away sin is what? Blood. The only thing that can remove sin is what? Blood. And the reason is because the Bible says that the wages of sin is what? Death. And so whenever a man sins from the book of Romans chapter 3, the consequence and the wages of sin is what? Death. So what can you do when a man has sinned if you want to relieve him of death is that you have to bring another in exchange. And if another is coming, that one has to die so that that one shall be freed. And so it was not easy to always produce human beings. And that was why it took kings to be buried with human beings. Because they felt and they believed over generations that the king was a superior being. So to make sure that a king makes it, and that when a king dies, that the generation of that kingdom, that they survive. Therefore, and then we began to see in some cultures by their own belief, sometimes they will collect seven virgins to bury a king, just to make sure that they have redeemed the throne and it was all in ignorance and so many nations today are still suffering as a result of the consequence of that ignorance because rather they brought causes and rather those lands are still in bondage that still held bound by the blood of the innocent that they had shed now today how do we guarantee that that bondage cannot continue if you have a family lineage where community lineage or in your people, innocent blood has been shed and that sin continues to speak. I will give you this simple illustration today. Now, it was always required that at the end of every year, every king, every priest will on behalf of himself first bring in a token of the blood 
when he does that, he is also supposed to not only bring repentance for his own sin, but he will represent the people. And as he enters the Holy of Holies, nobody knows whether it will be received, accepted or not. And that Holy of Holies, which is at the mercy seat, where he's supposed to bring the bowl of the blood, if he there comes in there and is not received, nobody goes in there and comes out alive if he's struck because of the not having received redemption. And nobody can go in there because it was only the high priest that was entitled and was permitted to go into the Holy of Holies. And that means that I used to wonder how dusty can that place be? I used to wonder the blood and the blood and the blood that is there. And I'm in a place that you only enter once a year. It must have been a very, very messy place. And that was how the old covenant was operated. And it's happened that this is the covenant that very much is still understood under the law. And this is what you see like when you enter a lot of shrines like the native doctors. They are still killing the bulls, they are still sacrificing. And that's why when you come into their worship, their deity or their altars, you keep seeing the mess, you keep seeing the feathers, you keep seeing they are trying to do something so that somebody's sin can be forgiven. And honestly, you know what Jesus did for us? You can't even count it. You can't even imagine it. But you can receive it if you can apprehend it this morning. And so when the high priest goes in with the blood, the high priest is right in there. And then hoping and believing and trusting God that the blood that they have brought shall be received. They will tie a rope on his waist. If any reason that the sin that he came to appeal for, that the weight is much, much weightier than the sacrifice he has made, will be simply struck dead. And if they wait and wait and he doesn't come out, they will now use the rope to bring him out. And that's the end of that high priest. Then they are going to need another high priest to go and try again. And the next high priest going in there has to find the blood that will be acceptable. And they're going to go on and on that way until they, maybe they have to wait for another one year or wait till. So the people are going to remain in famine until they can take in a commensurate blood that can take away the sin they have committed. And this is the principle that governs the occult world. And there you see people when they stop sleeping, then they're going to tell them, come bring the blood of your wife so that you can sleep. Then they donate their wife. Then after some time, the problem comes back. Then they say, now you've got to give us seven virgins. Then you've got to maybe bring us a whole plane. You need to bring down a plane. There need to be a plane crash. So they kept looking for blood looking for blood either to get richer, looking for blood either to be free from one thing or the other. And why was it that necessary that there was a need for the repeated sacrifice of the blood? I'm going to explain to you the history today. It's only the blood of Jesus that has the power for remission. Every other blood covers. What is the difference between remission and covering? Please follow me this morning, you will understand. What happens when something is covered? If I have a cloth, then I can show you, can I have a, a piece of cloth? When I, when I want to cover something up, what am I doing here? All I've done is that I've covered this, you cannot see it. But it doesn't mean that this is taken away. And so, as long as this is covered, this flower that is here, there will be no dust anymore. This flower that is here is protected. But it's still there. It was not taken away. But it's just protected. Nobody is seeing it again. Nobody is talking about it. It's not speaking again. Somebody comes in now who doesn't know what I have done. 
person will say, I don't like this cloth here, remove it. But they don't know the rule, they don't know what he's doing. It covers. The blood of pigeons cover. The blood of chickens cover. The blood of the cow, they cover. Even if it's seven cows, 50 bulls, 5,000 buffaloes, their blood will only cover. And so what does it take to cover? It means that if what I'm going to cover requires a lot to cover, then I'm going to keep applying and applying and applying until it covers. If you're a painter, you'll understand what I mean. Sometimes there are certain colors that you want to change. And in the process of changing the color, you are going to require, if it is a very strong color, like if you have like a black paint, and you want to change that black paint to become a white wall, the first thing of the white paint that you use will not cover it. The second one may not cover it. The third one, you may have to apply 10 buckets before you can cover that black paint and it may become white and become very, very covered. But that doesn't mean that the black paint is not there. If you have chemicals that can spill or scale it, the black paint is still there. If you want to cover a paint that is off-white or is already white, you're going to need maybe two or three buckets. But when it comes to changing color, you're going to need many more buckets. And that is why sometimes you're going to see them needing to cover certain scenes. And then they will now go down, they say that looking for an innocent blood. Now they began to discover that virgins are no longer virgins. And so sometimes they will go, maybe the man that is in question is a very wealthy man. And he has committed so much that the time has come and his sin is started to speak. Then the high priest he has visited will now say, go and bring another. You have brought cow. Cow is no longer working for you. It's going to take human blood. Then they're going for this ritual. Well, I wonder, what is all this ritual sacrifice? Somebody needed to rest. They need to take blood from somewhere. The evidence of the Gentile part, the part that are taking, maybe his sin was from the tongue or is from the sexual organ or from the breast. All those things are symbol that something has gone out. So they need to cut it fresh and bring it to show they have collected it so that somebody will sleep. Remission means blotting it away. It means cleansing. It means cleaning. It means removing it completely. There's a difference with removing something and covering something. When the blood of Jesus is applied to your sin, it doesn't cover it. And it's the only blood that has the power to do what? To take it away. And that's why the Bible spoke about the blood of the Lamb that take it away our sin. I began to say that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. So whether it covers it or whether it will totally take it out, it now all depends on the choice that you are going to take as a means of your being free. There's an old covenant and there's a new covenant. And that's why the Bible spoke about the new covenant that speaketh better things. The old covenant has the power to cover the sin. But the new covenant that we receive in Christ Jesus carries the power to take it away completely. Because the new covenant has the power to cleanse it. Why are we still walking away with our mess? Why not cleanse it? Why not allow the blood to take away your sin? Do you understand that in the physical, the way the blood is seen, when you tie it and you remove it, that's exactly what you see happening in the spirit world. Don't cover your sin anymore. 
let it be cleansed so that it will be seen no more allow the blood of Jesus this morning allow the blood to cleanse it to take it away I believe God needs me to say this word to somebody I was going to be racing to 30 points but I chose to just slow down if I could I could mention them but I need to have revelation for somebody this morning and I believe God in the name of our Lord Jesus that that young man needs to hear me so many people when they were in secondary school they entered courts and when they were caught in the nights of their initiations they shedded innocent blood some of them in the course of initiation some of the young men who were being initiated died during initiation they buried him there I'm speaking to somebody right now guess what that is called a corporate sin and that person's blood continues to cry just like the blood of Abel calling for vengeance over Cain and guess what why that blood cries the penalty of hitting somebody in an accident and abandoning the body the blood continues to cry and the vengeance is you shall be a vagabond and a fugitive today we see people that are vagabond and fugitives because there's a blood crying over them when a man has a blood guilt or a family has a blood guilt guess what that family or that man we continue being in torment the powers will be open to you you become a magnetor of evil spirit you become a magnetor of evil attack you become a magnetor of demonic oppression many people today are seeking for deliverance from one place to the other without understanding that this sin that is speaking that you can't keep covering it it looks like it's getting better but as soon as something happens i tell you one day it gets again exposed it comes back is it not time to i mean you left the occult but you know what you did not have the blood cleansed it was not cleansed you hit that young man you ran away you committed not murder maybe it was manslaughter it was not deliberate and that was why in those days they would take you to flee to somewhere waiting for the vengeance for the avenger the blood of the avenger this is serious and i tell you as i begin to speak i see that nigeria our land is polluted with so much blood there is so much shedding of innocent blood and for us to be saved in this country, we need the blood of Jesus on Nigeria. I actually want to employ the intercessors and prayer warriors, and even you, every one of us, is the time to plead the blood. Plead the blood. That's the key for the moment. It's only the blood of Jesus that has the power to take away. When it takes away, you don't see it anymore. You don't remember it anymore. There's no more proof. And so if you left or disconnected yourself from your group, maybe you're a medical doctor and you were into abortion, the only way you can be free is the blood of Jesus. I tell you what it does, come. Let me tell you what the blood does, the blood of Jesus. First and foremost, it will uncover. It will take away the covering. And if this is what it is that is speaking and needs to be removed, carry it. It removes it. Take that also. It takes it away. Then go with it. It leaves you without any evidence at all it will not come back again the records will never again be returned that's the one that can take away others covers do you understand now the difference between covering and taking away now cry out this morning pray in the name of our Lord Jesus ask the blood of Jesus this morning everything you have covered or that has been covered in your family lineage and in your generation that keeps aspiring and needs new sacrifices covered 
that this morning that you receive the blood of the lamb that take it away the sin that you take the exchange that by the blood today let the sin be taken away and be remembered no more let it be taken away and be remembered no more in the name of our Lord Jesus when the blood is applied and the blood acts there is no remembrance he doesn't remember that sin anymore if you're a young girl and you committed an abortion don't let the devil accuse you that is why you cannot get pregnant now no the blood takes it away and there's no more record of it the devil is a liar heaven doesn't remember there's no record of that abortion you are free but this is a right that are given to the children of God do you want to receive that redemption power and right this morning then what must you do you must receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior right there where you are that's the first step to take this morning step away from that cause from the yoke and the bondage they bring fear they bring torment and they bring anxiety pray with me ask God this morning Holy Spirit help me to understand the deep mysteries of the things of God as I come closer to this relationship and this covenant of a new testament and a new covenant and life in Christ Jesus then pray say I receive Jesus as my personal Lord and my Savior invite him to come into your heart or your life and your life will never be the same again in Jesus name